All right, it is Friday night. I am leaving for Whitehorse to go on a backpack hunt Sunday about 10 o'clock. So I got my pack weighed out, I'm about to do a pack dump video and show everybody what a very green rookie backpack hunter has in his backpack. So let's see how this goes. All right, first off, I am using the Stone Glacier Sky Tower 6900. This is actually a brand new bag. I have a Stone Glacier 3300 pack and a 7900 cubic inch pack. I could have used the 7900. What you end up doing with a bigger bag is normally stuffing it with crap that you don't need, so. I like to just go ahead and get a little bit smaller bag. I know I can fit everything in here. But everything is in here that I'll hunt with, it, with the exception of the camera that I'm filming with right now and my food. So everything else that's in here, I'll have with me. So let's get started. This is the lid on top. I got a few things in here. I'm gonna kind of dump everything out and then we'll go through everything that's in the bag. All right. I'll go ahead and take these off since they're on the front. Everybody and their mother knows what these are. These are Crocs. These are a luxury. You don't have to have these. They are nice. You get done hunting at the end of the day and you know, in the tent or around a campfire or something, you got something to put on other than your boots you've had on all day. So those are very nice to have. Coming over here to the side tripod this is an outdoorsman's tripod it's made in america they make them in arizona i've got a suray va5 fluid head which is for the money this fluid head cannot be beat it is a wonderful fluid head especially paired with the um, outdoorsman's bino tower i'll show you all that here in a little while this thing just things of note about this fluid head real quick uh this is an arca swiss plate compatible so which is it's a very popular plate for fluid heads and whatnot that's what my camera is the bino tower is the same and actually my regular video camera that i film hunts with is the same so highly recommend this I'm open the lid up Let's fold this back out of the way on top Here's my tent. This is a Hilleberg Octo one-man tent. If you don't know anything about Hilleberg, they make some of the best tents in the world. They're made in Estonia. Um, this thing is super light. It's probably about three pounds. I'm, I'm a, I can't remember. I should have read up on the specs a little bit, but it's around three pounds. One-man tent's got a vestibule on it. Everything you need. Open up the top, you see how much the bag's compressed so obviously the bag will be way up here with the lid on top once i fill this thing up my food will sit on the top right here all right this is an absolutely luxury item big blue solar charger i hunted with a guy a couple years ago that uh had one of these uh on a goat hunt actually which what i'm going to do there's a pretty popular brand out there that it's not very good you can buy these off of amazon and they are wonderful i don't backpack hunt all year round so i don't get to use these like those guys do all year round but i've used this for a couple times and they are wonderful paired up with a battery pack of your choice and you know if you're if you're out hunting all day and the weather's good you can leave this outside your tent charging your battery pack or or whatever which is super nice Never run out of power that way. All right. Um, let's go ahead and open this up. If you don't know anything about stone glacier packs, one of my favorite things that they have are their swing out pockets. They have these little tabs all up and down the inside of the bag right here. You put these little swing out pockets in here to keep like little items organized and whatnot. I'll go through this. This is my little junk drawer. 
bag with a bunch of small stuff in it. Uh, I've got two swing out pockets that I'm gonna be using. That's my kill kit, we'll go through that as well. Go ahead and just get it out right here. This is my Scree Ptarmigan pant and jacket. Now you know they come with little stuff sacks. We'll go through that here in a little while, but if you are hunting anywhere near the coast in British Columbia, Alaska, anybody that hunts up there knows if you have something in your backpack that you do not want to get wet, it goes in a dry bag in your backpack because you're gonna get rained on while you're up there, especially September, October. You could get soaked. So, especially you're down, your sleeping bag, all that stuff has to be in dry bags. Enough on that. Uh, sleeping pad, we'll go through that right there. This is my extra clothes. As you can tell, it's not very many. Um, you really gotta cut down on your clothes that you take. You're not gonna have a set of clothes for every day you're gonna be hunting. We're gonna be hunting for 10 days and I will more than likely wear the same pair of pants all 10 days. I have a spare pair of pants in here. Most of the guys that backpack hunt don't even take that. I've got, we'll go through what all is in here, but as you can tell, very minimal clothes. All right, I'll go ahead and pull this out before I forget. This is Scree Nebo rain suit. Always accessible. I got it on the side of my pack right here in these side zips. You don't want this down in the bottom of your pack. I always keep it in my side pocket. Doesn't matter what pack I'm running, these are always accessible. All right, toiletry bag. Not a whole lot in there. Toothbrush, toothpaste, dude wipes, deodorant. That's about it. Last in the main compartment, sleeping bag. This is the Stone Glacier Chill Cook 15 degree. Wonderful sleeping bag. I'm not gonna pull it out, but uh, if you're looking for a excellent sleeping bag, this is the one. It's not cheap, but it's roomy. I'm not a big fan of those mummy sleeping bags where you're just like compacted in there all night and you can't really move. This thing is really roomy. It's got a big toe box on it. Uh, I normally put my insoles and my boots in my sleeping bag at night or, you know, if your socks get wet or whatever, uh, wake up in the morning, they'll be dry. But chill cook, 15 degree, awesome sleeping bag. Last but not least, what's on my hip belt over here, got a Nalgene water bottle. These don't need any explanation. If you hunt out west or really anywhere, Nalgene water bottles are what everybody uses. Uh, I do have a roll of duct tape, little wrap of duct tape around it. Just, you never know when you're gonna need duct tape. It doesn't weigh anything. I actually need to redo that. This is, it's all kind of peeling up and ripping, but I'll do that before I leave. All right, last but not least, on my hip pocket over here, got my battery pack right here. This is Dark Energy. Uh, I think it's called Poseidon or something like that. I've had this for a long time. Never had a problem out of it. It's supposed to be waterproof. Like I said earlier, you charge, your, charge this up with your solar charger and you got power. So, especially for your inReach or whatever, if you're using inReach or your phone or whatever. Headlamp. It goes in my side pockets, easy to get to. Uh, this is a company out of Bozeman, Montana, I think. This is actually a new headlamp. It's called Peaks. One thing that's really nice about it is the button, you can lock the headlamp from coming on. So you basically turn it on uh, or turn it off, I should say, and hold it for like four seconds and it flashes and then the headlamp is locked. It can't come on in your bag or whatever. So there's a couple other, it's got a white bulb and a red bulb and all that. And it's supposed to last for like 60 hours, probably on the lowest setting, but pretty good battery life for a headlamp. So, all right, let's uh, open everything up. We'll get into all that and see what we got. All right, those are my boots that I'm going to wear. Those are La Sportiva Evos, I think is what they're called. I've had them for a couple years. They are wonderful boots. A lot of people run crispy, so it's kind of like the fad to do right now, but I've had these for a while, and I love these boots. They are about as tough as they come. Okay, 
first off, I'm gonna go through my clothes real quick. This is a Sea to Summit compression bag. These are awesome for kind of getting your clothes down, packed down as much as you can, save on space in your pack. And like I said earlier, there's most of the guys that do this all the time don't even take this much clothes because clothes do take up a lot of room in your pack. This is my pair of spare pair of pants. These are the Scree uh, hard scrabble pants in Summit. I'll use those as spare, spare pants. This is the 300 Merino hoodie. I'll have that. Um, I think I'm, I'll, I'll probably get too hot hiking up the mountain, getting to where we're gonna be, actually be hunting at in that. So I packed it rather than wearing it in. Also have a synthetic base layer right here. Uh, a little bit heavier weight. I'll probably wear a thin merino bottom and top hiking up probably. So a little bit easier to dry out that thinner stuff than that thicker stuff. So I'm going to pack that. All right. Now that is basically all the clothes I have. Rest of everything else I have in here, I have three pairs of merino underwear. There's actually four in here. I'm only going to take three. Uh, so you could throw one of those out. I'll swap those out every other day probably. And they are merino as nasty as it sounds. If there's any women watching this, merino underwear are awesome. They, you could probably wear them all week and they probably won't smell as nasty as that is. And then I've got three pairs of darn tough socks. So that is pretty much all the clothing that I'm taking extra other than my down jacket and pant and my rain suit. Now let's go through, I'll show you briefly what I'm gonna wear in and that will be the totality of all my clothes. All right, all right, here are my clothes I'm hiking up with. Uh, got the scree quarter zip 150 merino top, lightweight merino bottom, hard scrabble jacket. I will probably quickly come out of that. And then I've got my hard scrabble pants and my gaiters. Uh, the temperatures are supposed to be in the mid to high 40s during the day, roughly. It's just a guess. It's, now that is temperatures for white horse. So I would expect it to be a little bit colder up there it may be low 40s high 30s during the daytime even this little bit of clothes though you're going to get hot hiking around with full packs so that's all i'm gonna hike up with i will not get cold hiking in this so i'll be good this is my ptarmigan in my dry bag i'm gonna go ahead and open it up i'll show you a little something with what i do with my little stuff sacks which is a good way those are my down pants right there I'll just do it with my jacket. All right, open her up. These little stuff sacks are really nice and they are labeled. So digging through your pack, you know what you're getting. Pull her out. All right. Now this is, most people, they've got pockets on there to put this in. I'll show you what I do. I like to doing this a lot better. I don't have anything in my pockets. I need to use my pockets or whatever. I don't have to worry about pulling something out and this falling out and losing it. But I take my cord right here, the little tab on the jacket, run it through there and half hitch it into the loop right there. And when you put your jacket on, you're never going to feel this back there on your jacket. So just a nice little tip for keeping up with your stuff sack for your down jacket and down pants. Okay, swing out pockets. Got two on my pack. Open her up. Got about a 50 foot roll of paracord. I'll actually uh, show y'all how I roll that up where it's nice and neat and it's not in a wasp nest in your bag. And have on knife with some extra blades. I've got two types of blades that I carry at all times. 
These are the number 22. Yes, number 22, they have like a rounded edge on the, on the point. So it's good for caping or whatever. You're not as likely to poke a hole in your, in your cape. And then I got the 60 A's. They're your typical replaceable blade that's sharp on the end, good for cleaning and quartering up an animal. So it's basically all I got in there. I always keep a Ziploc bag in here for a license. Depending on where you're going, some of them are paper tags, some of them a little bit waterproof, but you're always ready for that. All right. Uh, this is this is what I call my drunk junk drawer. There's all kind of random stuff in here. I always take a little puffer for me for my uh, camera lens. Kind of random and weird, but I always have one. Spare headlamp. I have had to use this a few times, so this is very good to have is an extra headlamp. If you lose yours, brakes, something happens, you always have an extra headlamp. Now one good thing that I have, I do care I do have a Garmin watch that has a headlamp or a flashlight on it, so that's a big plus about this Garmin watch that I wear. So that's not really part of the video, but I do have one. So spare headlamp. All right, spare D-loop material. I always got that in there. I've had this same piece in there forever. I've never used it, but it's nice to have. Doesn't weigh anything. Uh, small Leatherman. Cabela's makes this. Nothing fancy. You can use any one you want. Um, this is something rather new. This is called Zip Fizz. It's basically kind of a little kick in the pants. If you need some energy, it doesn't have sugar in it. Zero sugar. It's got a lot of vitamin B12 in it. And to be exact, it has 104,000% daily value of your vitamin B12. You would think if you put... 104,000 percent of anything in your body it would kill you but whatever it <laughs> hadn't killed me i just discovered this up in montana a guy i was hunting with had some and it's it works good it's cool you can take it out and chug it or mix it in your water or whatever i typically he encouraged me to chug it and then chase it with water which was better so you don't have your whole water bottle just tasting like that lens pin for camera uh always have that in there lighter one of the most important things that you have in your pack always always have that in there this is a spare i keep a spare release in here also i got three field points they stay in here i always 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 have a spare release i don't care what anybody says if you're bow hunting put a spare release in your bag Last but certainly not least, now this is pretty cool. Most people have seen these. This is off of Amazon. This is a three-way charger for Apple Lightning for my phone, USB-C plug, and then a regular USB plug. So I can basically charge anything that I have in my pack. Headlamp, battery pack, cell phone, in reach, all of that can be charged with this one cord. You don't have five cords in your bag, which is highly annoying. So get you one of these, they're nice. All right, that kind of does it for that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll unroll that paracord and show you how I roll that up really quick. This paracord actually has some reflective thread in it too, which is pretty nice. So you can put it you know, if you're hanging meat up in a tree or something like that, you can shine your headlight over there and flashlight kind of reflect off of it. You'll be able to see it pretty good. So it's not a bad idea. All right, this is basically how I do this. Um, you can roll it up any way you want to. This is the quickest way to do it. Put my uh, paracord in there and like thumb like that, grab the cord, start wrapping around your Right in front of your elbow and just keep wrapping. You can wrap it up pretty quick just like this. Doesn't get tangled up. So just like that. Okay, take it off your elbow. 
Now you need some slack on your ends where you started and on the other side. You need both, both need tails kind of on both ends. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the cord like so, and you're gonna fold her over in half, just like this. Kind of keep it compact. I'm just gonna let that fall. Okay. Just like that. And kind of fold it up kind of tight. Just like that. All right, I moved the camera so you could see a little bit better. Okay, so here's one end. I'm gonna make a loop right there, just like that. Leave the tail out just like that. And you're gonna take the other tail right here and you're gonna start wrapping. Wrapping around that loop you made right there. So just kinda in line just like that. You want it pretty tight. I'm actually gonna make it just a little bit longer than that. So let's take one more loop out of it. Okay, that's plenty long enough right there. Okay, so start wrapping. Get that out of the way. And pull it tight. Keep her, keep her pretty tight. So you can get a couple wraps on it. Okay, all right. All right, you got that done right there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go back and take this loop right here that I looped around right there. I took my other tail wrapped around that loop. So all you're gonna do is take this tag in that you just wrapped around the bundle several times. You're gonna put it through that loop. You're not gonna tie it, nothing. You're just gonna put it right through there. You're gonna take your other tail that you start, that your loop is made from, that it's wrapped over, and you're gonna pull just like this. And it's gonna pull this tail up underneath that bundle, just like that. And you don't have to pull it up under there super far. It's about halfway under there, and your bundle is now not going anywhere. And you won't have a big old knot in your bag if you ever need to get to your paracord. And you just take this tail right here and just kind of wrap it up. So, pretty slick. All right, quick rundown through my bino harness. This is marsupial gear. These are the best bino harnesses made in existence. I've used a few different brands, hands down the best one made. It's got magnetic strips on the bottom to keep the lid out of the way, it folds up. This is the enclosed one, so it kind of keeps dust out a little bit. Little zipper pocket. Uh, Keep chapstick in here. Little very small, lightweight green headlamp. Always keep that for hunting whitetails. Always got that on my cap. I keep my little license book in here as well. If my license will fit in there. If not, I put it in my bag. So that's all that's really in there. Rangefinder, Leupold RX4 rangefinder, angle compensation, blah, blah, blah. Got a little rigged up tri-slide with some paracord in here when I'm getting ready to go on a stalk or something. Pull it, tighten it up. It's perfect length, it's right up to my eye. I can drop it out of the way. It It is kind of floppy, I would say. So, you know, if you're bending down or something, you gotta be careful with that, but then you loosen it up put it back in the little compartment. Um, this side's my bino tower. We'll go through that in just a second. Lens cloth over here. I keep my release in this pocket. It's always in there. I don't ever take it out. Okay, let's talk about the bino tower really quick. Okay, all right. I've mentioned it three times already. So, that has got an Arca Swiss compatible plate on it, so it will fit on here. So it slides in there just like that. Lock her down, just like that. When I'm glassing with binos, I always use it backwards. It's more comfortable that way. All right, now how this works is this little stud right here. These are 
the Swarovski 12 by 42 NL Pures. These are actually very new. I had the EL 10 by 42s forever and I traded them in and got these. These are the best binoculars on the planet and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So the way these work, put that stud right through that hole right there in that bino tower. It pops in there and you are glassing. It is absolutely wonderful. There's no straps or anything that you got to carry around to, you know, some of those bino mounts. They got, it's a big plate that goes on there with straps and all that, but super lightweight glass all day like that. All you do is unlock it, press the button down, pull it out, back in your pack. All this is up in five seconds. So Bino Tower is super nice. Outdoorsman's, they have that figured out. Sleeping pad. This is the Nemo Quasar 3D insulated. I'm not gonna really unroll this thing at all, but I'll show you something pretty neat that I take with me. This is actually new. This is a flex tail pump. So instead of blowing up, this is, this is absolutely a luxury item. You don't have to have this, but uh, blowing up your, your sleeping pad just got really easy with this thing. Uh, it's also it has a light on it and a little hook if you wanna hang it in your tent. So you kinda got a light accessible. And again, I've got a Garmin watch with a flashlight on it, but this little pump is super nice. Uh, this particular pad comes with a pump sack as well, uh, which is pump sacks are nice. They're a lot better than blowing them up with your own lungs. Nothing fancy, just a sleeping pad. This one is a little bit heavy compared to a normal sleeping pad, I will say, but it is a very, very, very comfortable pad. So I'm going to try her out this is actually the first time i've ever used this pad i've got two others i've got a thermarest pad and a clement pad it's kind of three things i didn't go over earlier glassing pad weighs absolutely nothing i keep this strapped on the bottom of my pack with my compression straps as you can see most people do that trekking pole this is the best trekking pole i've ever used uh you can see how compact it is most of them are like telescopic this one kind of folds up black diamond makes this i'll probably use it hiking up and trekking poles are invaluable if you're coming down the mountain with a full pack with meat on it so those bags those stone glacier bags are rated for about 150 pounds and you'll have every bit of that on your pack uh bringing meat down and hide and horns and all that. So you can really, really take the load off, take some load off your knees and legs with a trekking pole. So I'm only taking one, I won't take two, but that lid, Cajun two-step seasoning, which has dethroned Tony's for the best Cajun seasoning. I feel sorry for people that don't live in Louisiana because you probably have never heard of this. It is wonderful. Gloves, Arc'teryx. I think these are the Arc'teryx SL gloves. I think they're SL or AL, I can't remember. These are not waterproof. They are made with Gore-Tex Infinium. They are 100% windproof. They are perfect, as long as it's not raining and freezing cold, a good, about the best mid-season glove that you can ask for. They got kind of like a leathery material on their palm. It feels like leather. It's very grippy. Uh, you can shoot with these with a bow. They're really nice. Camp bowl. See the Summit makes this. Uh, put my oatmeal in it in the morning. It's called the X bowl or whatever, but collapsible, doesn't weigh anything. Just throw it in your lid. Beanie. I'll probably put that in my pack so it doesn't get wet, but I always have one of those. And last but not least, one of the most underrated things in my pack that I absolutely love. And yes, it is just a spork, but this is a Sea to Summit spork. It's got a long handle on it, which makes it nice eating mountain house at night. You get in your tent, you know, you're tired and wore out. And if you got some little crappy spoon, your hand's digging around in your 
mountain house trying to get the food out of the bottom of it and you get food all over your hands and you got to go wash your hands get out of your tent which is not fun or you can wash it in your vestibule but uh it's got a long handle on it uh you can actually reach down in the mountain house bag without getting food all over your hands which is really nice go through my torture bag real quick dude wipes deodorant uh, these are actually really neat. I've never seen these before. I was at Walmart buying a little travel deodorant. I normally get like just secret or some girly brand of small deodorant, uh, little travel ones, but this is coconut vanilla, if you care to ask. Don't be worried about scent if you're going mountain goat hunting. People that hunt in the south have always heard the term, if turkeys could smell, you couldn't kill them. Well, mountain goats can smell and they can see as good as a turkey just about so you can forget about scent control especially on a backpack hunt and then toothbrush toothpaste it's all that's in there so kind of minimize as much as that stuff as you're willing to minimize i'm not going anywhere without a toothbrush or some dude wipes but rest of that you really could get away with not taking all right, that pretty much concludes my pack dump video. Everything you saw that I kind of went through, my camera, tripod, only thing it really doesn't include is my food and my bow and anything kind of associated with that. Uh, my pack's weighing in right around 40 pounds, which is heavy. The camera adds to that. I could cut out, cut out probably a my extra pair of pants if I wanted to. Probably clean up my little junk drawer bag a little bit, but I'm good with it. That's pretty much where I expected to be, taking the camera with me. So uh, food, a good rule of thumb for food is two pounds of food per day. We're hunting for 10 days, so it's gonna be about 20 pounds. So we'll be about 60 pounds going up the mountain without my bow on my pack. Depending on what the terrain looks like when we get there when we fly in uh if it's not too super thick i'll probably carry my bow and not keep it on my pack just to kind of maybe prevent hanging something on the way up uh if it's thick i'm gonna have to have my hands the whole time then i'll probably have to uh strap my pack strap it to my pack which i'm not real crazy about but gotta do what you gotta do so anyways Leave uh, Sunday morning is Friday night right now. I'm pretty excited, so hopefully have a little bit of luck. Uh, thanks for watching.